Hello, my name is Jimmy Love, and I'm completing this discussion for EDA 76200. I'm going to speed up because the last couple edits, it took me 13 minutes, and I know we're required to keep this at, 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 at 10. And so I'll just try to be as brief as I can here and to the point. Uh, the discussion requires us to uh, evaluate an education reform, analyze an education reform, and then cross-reference it uh, to... Uh, Hackman's five social justice um, component, the critical uh, components of social justice education. What is the uh, reform? Well, I decided to explore, research, review um, open enrollment. Open enrollment is a, a bill that is proposed by Senator uh, Republican Brad Pollitt, uh, who represents uh, the 52nd District of Missouri. Uh, Pollitt proposed the open enrollment his proposal is actually not the first bill. The first bill was not able to pass for various reasons. And um, his bill offered uh, some modifications and some uh, stipulated conditions, including only state and federal money would uh, follow the student and the local money would stay where, you know, the student's home school was. Students, schools are given a choice on accepting transfers. Each district must indicate before by a certain day, which is December 1st, whether they participate in the open enrollment program. Students that transfer in the district must stay a full year. And students who, uh, students can't just jump around according for sports, which has been unfortunately a phenomenon in, in low SES schools uh, and um, rural schools. They have accepted uh, or recruited maybe even the phenomenal athletes, uh, but not necessarily you know, promoting a program of academic growth, whereas it's just been for emphasizing uh, athletic prowess, and, and, and that was unequitable in, in, in my mind, unethical. Uh, moving along, Pilot's uh, proposal, the bill is actually $80 million over um, the initial bill, so it's a very um, expensive undertaking proposal uh, the program to transfer students to allow students to go to whatever school that they want to attend um, based on creating a fair education uh, situation how are people situated differently to experience the effects of this reform well, open en enrollment is a dynamic education reform uh, that has been met with mixed reviews. Uh, different people receive it differently. It affects different people differently. For example, a student um, who leaves a low, low SES school and goes to a, a, a high, you know, on-level performance school, on paper, that's ideally well, because it's like, okay, you get a better school, you get teachers that have resources, materials, the class has less distractions, parental involvement and engagement is, is up to par, and, and those things. However, there's a social aspect that open enrollment doesn't address when you consider a student's development, when he may, his siblings may not get to go to the, uh, the, the good school. And so that can just have an adverse effect on the student's self-identity, self-concept, or sometimes students are targeted unfairly, or oh, you go to that white school, or, or, or you think you're better than us, or, or you come back to the neighborhood talking like a little white boy. And those are some of the ridiculous, ignorant, uninformed reactions, albeit authentic, because sometimes students just tell you, shoot from the hip, so to speak. Let me keep going. I don't want to run over time. Oh, oh and so teachers also uh, meet open enrollment with a certain level of, of sometimes apprehension, uh, sometimes non-motivation. Uh, in some cases, you have teachers that are not ready or even in some cases willing to receive the student with the unique learning style, uh, sometimes the traumatized student. Sometimes the student that has, um, again, a different way of learning, a different way of perceiving, uh, a different way of responding. And so if a teacher is not equipped 
or inspired to accommodate that student, it can create a bad disparity for that student and for their education environment. Ultimately, learning is hindered when the teacher is not socially uh, uh, conscious or socially aware. Parents, parents sometimes have to incur issues with transportation. Uh, often, unfortunately, the transportation is such in a low SES communities to where students are already not making it to school consistently on time and stuff. And so now a parent has to get the student sometimes an hour away from home and to get the student back safely an hour back to school, I mean, you know, back to school and to home, that the time adds up, and sometimes the um, patterns of poor attendance uh, that was exhibited at the low SES school actually carries with the student, and that creates conundrums for the administrators, for the teachers, ultimately for the students as well. Moving along here, how are marginalized populations impacted by open enrollment. Well, I, I think I mentioned it a little bit here, but just to emphasize specific um, impacts, students can feel left out, students can feel lost, students can feel like they're not wanted, um, similar to when, when they had the bus, um, the, the, the DCA program, where students will get up at night we felt like the wee hours of the morning just to go to the bus stop and it's still dark outside just to travel to a school that ideally was receiving a better education but you will return right back to the neighborhood where you come from and then it was it just felt like something wasn't right um, something wasn't right when you were going somewhere to receive something that it was almost like your neighborhood wasn't good enough to teach you and that created a, a to me, uh, for me, uh, uh, a tainted outlook of, of, of me, of my neighborhood. Like, oh, it's better out there, and that's why I'm going out there, but I'm not of out there. I'm only out there for a small time, for a big reason, and it's just, it, 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 you know, and so marginalized populations. Now, granted, certain people, this is what the doctor ordered. Uh, understandably, this is good. You know, you have a, a, a poor school, a poor learning environment, and now you can learn, you can teach. I mean, you can get through it, and you can get to it. This is this is good. But I think for the most part, marginalized populations are not benefiting from open enrollment as much as the the, the bill writer ideally thought. Okay, I have a couple minutes left. Okay, well, wow, these pictures do take. Okay, what are the barriers? Okay, I mentioned. Well, barriers are uh, include the money, the the transportation, teacher training, um, a lot of teacher training. So I don't want to. I, I, okay, these are compare cross reference. Okay, good. According to Hackman, uh, there are five critical components of social justice education. Content mastery, critical thinking and analysis of oppression, action and social change, uh, personal reflection, awareness of multicultural group dynamics. Since I only have one minute, I won't elaborate on all of them. I will just say open enrollment does not do well to emphasize or support either of them. Uh, content mastery in a way, because if you're in a better place with learning and stuff, you can ideally learn better. However, what is the content? Is when you get into some of the social, culturally relevant learning, the, the pedagogical teaching, uh, the, the motivation from the teacher. And so um, when the teacher doesn't have that, specifically the personal reflection, where he or she is not doing the whole check your bias at the door, he or she is a victim of his or her own bias. And sometimes without even knowing it, they're spilling that right on their students, right on their colleagues, and that has an adverse impact on teaching and learning. 15 seconds to go here. Critical thinking and analysis of oppression, action and social change. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Um, thank you. It's 10 minutes. Good day.